Hello, welcome to lesson eight of additional maths. Today we're going to be looking at recurrence relations. Um, this is all about sequences where you find the next term based on the previous term in, in the sequence. Okay, so this will be using some notation that you might not be familiar with. Um, there is There are parts of the GCC course which do involve this, um, namely the iteration part of the GCC course. So if you are used to iteration, then this shouldn't be too new for you, okay? Um, so let's look at this first question. What are the first five terms of the sequence defined by the recurrence relationship? And then in this green box, I've got the recurrence relationship. The recurrence relationship is x subscript n plus one is equal to two lots of x so subscript n squared minus three lots of x subscript n. Now, I just want to talk about those subscripts and what this means. I mean, you you know what powers mean, what, what a superscript is. So this this squared, you know, you know what that means. OK, you're timesing something by itself. But this subscript is just some notation to tell us what term of a sequence we have. So this thing here, x subscript n plus one just means the n plus one -th term of the sequence x. OK, so x here doesn't really stand for a specific number. And it's not a variable. It's what it is. It stands for a sequence. A sequence. Sequences are things like um, the sequence of square numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, etc. Or the sequence of even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, etc. Okay, so here xn plus 1 just means the n plus 1 term of the sequence. So if I wanted the seventh term of the sequence, then n would be 6, and I'd have x subscript 6 plus 1, that would be the seventh term of x. Okay, so n plus 1 term of the sequence here is equal to two lots of the nth term of the sequence squared minus three lots of the nth term of the sequence. So what that means is that the next term of the sequence, xn plus 1, is based around is equal to two lots of the previous term of the sequence squared minus three lots of the previous term. So it's just telling you that there is a relationship between the next term and the previous term. And to find the next term, you need to know the previous term. Now, in this question, they give you the first term. So x1 is equal to 1. That means the first term of this sequence is 1. Now, we can use the recurrence relationship to find the second term, because the second term is based on the first term. So if I rewrite the recurrence relationship with a subscript of 2 on the left side, that means that n would be 1, because n plus 1 is 2, that means the nth term is the first term. So what we do, the second term is two lots of the first term squared minus three lots of the first term. Okay, to get the next term, that's what we do to the previous term. We're told what the first term is, so I can find the second term by doing two lots of one squared minus three lots of one. And that gives me two times one minus three times one, it's two take away three, so it's negative one. So the second term in this sequence is negative one. Okay, we want the first five terms, so we need to keep going. So what we do now is we substitute that second term, the result of the second term, back into the recurrence relationship to find the third term. So the third term of the sequence is two lots of the second term squared minus three lots of the second term. So here, that would be two lots of minus one squared minus three lots of minus one. Minus one squared is one, times by two is two. Minus three times minus one is plus three. So we have two plus three, which is five. So the third term is five. And then I'm going to find the fourth term, which is two lots of the third term, which we already know is five squared minus three lots of five. Okay, so I'm substituting five in into the recurrence relationship to find the next term. And two lots of five squared is two lots of 25, which is 50. Take away 15, we get 35. And then the fifth term, again, 
I substitute 35 into the recurrence relationship to get the fifth term. So two lots of 35 squared minus three lots of 35. And that is equal to 2,345. So the first five terms are there. So what I do is I now write down the first five terms. So the first five terms are 1, minus 1, 5, 35, and 2,345. So that is how the sequence starts. And you can keep going forever if you wanted to. Okay. So a recurrence relationship just tells you how to find the next term based on the previous term. Okay. So let's see if you can have a go at this one. So I'm going to ask you to find the first four terms this time. So find the first four terms. of the sequence defined by u subscript r plus 1 is equal to 2 lots of u r plus 3. So here I'm using u instead of x. So sometimes they use x, sometimes they use u for the sequence. And sometimes they use n, sometimes they use r. So here I'm using r. So the r, term, the r plus 1th term of the sequence is 2 lots of the r term of the sequence plus 3. So use that recurrence relation with the first term is equal to 0. So u1 is 0. So using that, find the first four terms of this sequence. So pause at this point and have a go. Find the next few terms until you've got four terms in total. Okay, so if you've done this right, you, you substitute zero in first to find the second term. So the second term of the sequence is equal to two lots of zero plus three. Two lots of zero is zero plus three is three. So the second term is three. The third term is two lots of the second term plus three. So that's six plus three, so we've got nine. The fourth term is two lots of the third term plus three. So that's 18 plus three, which is 21. And now I have the first four terms. So the first four terms are zero, three, nine, and 21. Well done if you got that right. Okay, so there's the answer to that. So what you should do now is you should go and practice the first exercise from chapter four from this book. Okay, so that's exercise 4.1 from this textbook. The first three questions are based just around this. It gives you a recurrence relationship and it gives you a first term. Okay, actually in question three, it gives you a recurrence relationship where you need the first two terms to find the third term, okay? So that'd be a nice one to practice to, to develop a little bit more fluency and a bit more understanding of, of how far recurrence relationships can go. And then if you want to develop more fluency, go on beyond that to the more difficult exam type questions, which will come on beyond from question four onwards. Okay, enjoy.